Okay, today we are going to talk about the scientific method. I apologize for the recording quality again today, but I have ordered a microphone, so I should have some awesome sound in the upcoming videos. But for today, we're going to make it through with this one. The scientific method. Questions of who uses it? What is it? And why should I care? Well, first of all, the scientific method is probably not a new concept, not the first time that you've heard this, <clears throat> but um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, do any of these sound familiar? Where are my shoes? What should I have for lunch? What class do I have next? Did I do my homework for that class? This one should not sound familiar. Who can I get to do my homework for that class? Or which deodorant works the longest? I hope that's a familiar question or just a thought that you have so that you know and you smell good in class. But those are all questions that, that people will have in order to come up with some scientific work. All right, so what we have basically is with the scientific method, you have scientists that approach their work in the same way whether it's a scientist in Japan or in Colombia or in the United States or in Sweden, they all do their work in the same way. They use common practices in their work so that their work can be repeatable by anyone. And so they're all the same standard practices and the same steps. So they use the scientific method. What that really is is this systematic approach that's used in science, and it, it provides this process of doing research. Now the second for this end part here where it says and to verify the work of others, that's the most critical part of all of this because you have to be able to verify the work. And uh, so if, if I were to come up with a cure for cancer one day in the lab, but no one else could ever recreate it, then it's really not any good because you have to be able to repeat the, the results. All right, let's hit the steps to the scientific method. Now, I want you to keep in mind, there's the same basic steps. Some textbooks, some, some teachers will combine different steps. They may state them differently. Um, but it's all the ba same basic steps to the scientific method. Sometimes there'll be six. Some will say eight. They're kind of all over the place. But it's the same basic framework. So the first part of this is to state the problem. What's the problem? Like, for example, which deodorant is best to use? That's the problem. You want to find out. The, well, really, I guess the problem would be that you don't smell good. But, all right. Then you come up with some sort of hypothesis. You're going to do some research and make some observations. You're going to conduct, design and conduct an experiment. Record and analyze the data that you get from your experiment. You ask yourself, do you have to do more experimentation? Sometimes you go back and you do more. And then you make some kind of, you make a conclusion based on the data that you have, uh, that you found. And then you report the findings. So let's take apart each one of these briefly. All right, the first one, you have some kind of problem. It's the question you're trying to answer or the problem you're trying to solve. What's the problem? Or what am I trying to answer? You, and you try to narrow it down. The more general you are, it's very hard in order to, um, it's very hard to be able to, if it's too general, in order to be able to, to answer that. Woo, that was loud. Okay. Um, the information portion. You're going to gather data about your particular question. You're going to look in books, magazines, reports. You're going to talk to experts. You're going to look at your past experiences. But you are going to gather data and information about that particular question. And you're going to make some observations. This is, you're going to be using your senses to gather information about the world around you. And so you're, you're making observations that are very specific to the question that you want answered. Now your observations can be of two types. You can have qualitative which is usually made with your senses. Think of quality. So your qualitative uh, observations, color, taste, feel, shape, sound, 
And the example I have here is Olivia is wearing a blue t-shirt or the lab countertop is smooth or the dog's fur is shiny. Those are all qualitative um, observations. And then the other type you could have is a quantitative. Quantitative will always be a number based on some exact measurement. The room is eight meters long. John is 141 centimeters tall. Those are examples, but qualitative, the example there would be the room is large, or John is tall, or John is short. That's qualitative. Quantitative actually includes a number. All right, then you form a hypothesis. We've always heard a hypothesis is an educated guess. There's nothing wrong with that. However, this next part, it's a prediction that's based on data. It's very, very important. What you think the answer is going to be, your hypothesis is your educated guess, but it's based on gathered information. You have made observations, you have done some research here on this, and then you form a hypothesis. All right, now we're into the experiment. You have a set of controlled observations that are going to test the hypothesis. So you have to have them at a control. When the scientists conduct the experiment, they only change one factor at a time and they keep everything else the same. If you vary more than one thing in an experiment, how do you know what's actually making the difference? Is your, do you smell less like body odor from the, if you, if you, from the new deodorant, or is it because you showered, or you used a different kind of soap in the shower, or you didn't do any activity, you won't really know what the difference is if you vary all of them. But if the only thing you vary is the type of deodorant, now you're going to see a change. All right, now the factor that you actually change is called the variable. Think about that word. If you vary something, it means you change it. So the variable is the factor you change. And the one that you keep the same is called a control. All right, now your results. This is, you're gonna, you have your collection of information and data from the experiment. Qualitative and quantitative. You're gonna have both information that you have gathered from your experiment. It could be charts, graphs, written work, anything like that can be your results. This is the results part. This is what has actually happened when you ran the experiment. All right, now your conclusion. What was the answer to your question? The conclusion goes back to your original question and your conclusion is based only on your results, not by what you think is going to happen. We're done with the what we think. It's only based on the qualitative and quantitative results. And here's the big one. It is okay if it turns out that your hypothesis was not correct. You learned something as a result. So much of science is done by a scientist not being correct with their original hypothesis. It only just starts the process there. It doesn't finish it. And so, uh, so it is perfectly okay if your hypothesis is not correct. Then you wanna report your findings. One of the most important parts is to report them to others. Scientists don't work in a vacuum. They work together, they read each other's research help others to learn. If you had the most wonderful hypothesis and many student uh, scientists duplicate it, then da, 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 and it's continually, well, I don't know if I like this proven true by other scientists because we really don't prove things in science. But if it's continually shown acceptable at this point, it can become a theory. And if your theory is not ever, ever disproven up to this point, it then becomes a scientific law. So theory, law, law the most intense, and there you have it for the scientific method. That's all for today. Have a great evening or morning or whenever you're listening.